name is Vincent Riccio. I'm a technical marketing manager with VMware focused on automation. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about a new feature in VRealize Automation 8.1. That feature is custom resource and then resource actions. Custom resources uh, basically allow you to define anything as a resource. So in VRealize Automation, resources are things like virtual machines or cloud native type objects like S3 buckets or uh, Azure databases that you can drag onto our Blueprint Canvas. However, in some instances, you may want to create your own custom resource. Uh, a resource could be anything from adding users to Active Directory or creating some sort of application package. Custom resources are very flexible because they're based on Realize Orchestrator workflows that allow you to use multiple programming languages to create workflows that can do almost anything in your environment. Then these resources can be drag and drop onto the canvas, be part of your blueprint and ultimately your deployment. You can also create day two actions on these custom resources. So if you wanted to later have an option and a drop down for a day two action to update it or add something to the object or even delete the object, those particular type of custom day two actions are available. Also, let's talk a little bit about resource actions. Resource actions are essentially custom day two actions that you can apply to any object or resource within the system. So for instance, you could create a custom day two action for like a vSphere virtual machine to move it to another folder or to do some day two action that you want to perform on the machine, whether it's an AWS machine or something like that. And those will show up in the, in the actions menu on the deployed machine. So these are ways to create custom actions basically on a resource that you've already deployed. Let's take a look. So here I am in the Viralize Automation 8.1 UI. Essentially now we have a section up here called design. This used to be called the blueprint section. But now under design, we have three choices, blueprints, custom resources, and resource actions. Let's first take a look at custom resources. When I click on the custom resource, I can see some options in order to create one. I already created one just to show you for the example. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a user to a group within Active Directory. So up here I've, made, I've labeled it add Active Directory user, created my resource type and my external type, and then I've activated it. We can also set the scope for the custom resource, meaning that we can assign it to one or more projects or just tell it any project can use this resource. A project is a collection of users that have permissions to deploy blueprints to certain cloud zones. So we can limit the scope of who can actually use this particular custom resource based on a project that they're associated with. Then we have the option to create, update, and destroy in terms of life cycle of this object. In my particular case, I'm going to add a user to a group as my create, and then remove the user from a group as my destroy. So if I were to destroy the deployment, I could remove the user from a group. Additional actions that you can take on the object are, are uh, you're capable to create those down here. For instance, there's a number of actions that could be essentially more v Orchestrator workflows. So we can pick from just a plethora of options or create our own. And those would be day two actions that we could take against that object. In my particular case, I have an option to change the password of the user. We can also customize the request form of the day two action. So if they click on the day two action inside the UI, we can create a nice form for them if we want to modify any of the tables or 
any of the inputs. We also expose the schema of the workflow that we're going to use. So in my particular case, I've got two inputs that I need to address. The user that I'm going to add, and then the group that I want to move that user to. In the blueprint, we'll see that these two schema items get exposed once we drag and drop the resource onto the canvas. Okay, now I'm going to show you resource actions. So I've got a couple resource actions already created, so let me just click on one that I've already created. This one is move VM to a folder. So what I've done is I went ahead and named it. I activated it, and I'm going to allow anyone to use this resource action against the proper machine. So in this particular instance, my resource type that I'm going to add was a Cloud vSphere machine. You can add any resource type here that's built in, like AWS, Azure, NSX objects, as the resource type that you want to take the day two action against. When we add our resource type in here, we're going to expose the schema of that resource type, such as all the properties that belong to it, like OS type. Is it going to be Windows or Linux? Also, the resource name as well, the name given to the machine during provisioning. I also have a property binding, which creates a workflow action that allows me to go and get the name of the VM that gets deployed using the resource name schema property. And then the workflow that's going to actually get kicked off when I trigger this action is move virtual machine to a folder. We can also add conditions to this resource action, meaning that we only want the action to show up in certain instances, or certain conditions, rather. So for instance, if I look at my schema type again, and I see OS type is Windows or Linux, Maybe I want to restrict this condition, restrict this action, sorry, to certain conditions like OS type would equal Windows. So in that case, the action will only show up if the operating system is Windows. Okay, so now I'm in my Blueprint Canvas. I have a blueprint here that I'm going to use to deploy that virtual machine, a vSphere virtual machine, but I also want to add my custom resource onto the canvas. So if I look on the left-hand side, we see all of our resource types. Some of these I mentioned earlier, like AWS instances or NSX networks. vSphere machines is also a resource type. When I scroll down, I'm going to see my custom resource. Add AD user. So let me just drag that onto the canvas. And now this will go ahead and get created along with the deployment. Now, before it gets created, I need to add my input bindings. So for the sake of time for the demo, I already added my inputs into my YAML code up here. I'm going to have two inputs for username and group name. So down here, I just need to add my input. Now, the inputs will automatically uh, show up here uh, once you do the dot or the period. And then that makes it easy to go ahead and consume them so you don't have to uh, type in the name yourself or remember what they are. Okay, so now I have my two inputs bound here to this custom AD object, the resource tag. So if I look up here, there's group and then user and user and then group. Let's go ahead and deploy this. So when I deploy it, I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to say custom resource. I'm going to use my current draft. And then now what I'm going to do is I need to look for the name of the individual that I want to move, the user account. And then under group name, I'm going to pick the group in Active Directory that I want to move that user to. So in this case, I'm going to move Cloud Admin. So 
So it should go find cloud admin for me in Active Directory. And now I'm going to move this cloud admin user to a group. And what it'll do is it'll query everything that's private. So I can see in here that there's different groups for private. I'm going to throw them in the private cloud developers group. And then we'll hit deploy. Okay, so we can see that the deployment got done. If I click on the deployment section, I can see that the Cloud Active Directory user was created. I can see the user that was created, and then also the group that, was, that they were sent to. <clears throat> now I can look at my Active Directory and see if the user made it in. So now we can see that Cloud Admin account got put into the Private Cloud Developers group for me. The other thing that I can do now as well is take that resource action that I created to move the VM to a different folder um, and go ahead and execute that on the VM that was deployed. So if I look here inside of my vCenter, I can see that I've got this production VMs folder that's currently empty. So what I want to do is I want to take this virtual machine that's a vSphere virtual machine and I want to move it to that folder. So if I hit Actions, I've got that, that custom resource action that I created called Move VM to Folder. If I click on that, it gives me the option then to query vCenter based on the vRealize Orchestrator workflow and then see all the folders that are inside that vCenter system. But since I know I want to move it to the production folder, I can search for production. So there's the production VMs folder inside my vCenter. So I'm going to click on that. I'll go ahead and hit Submit. And now it's just in the process of moving that VM to the new folder. And uh, we'll just go ahead and give it just a second. And we can see that the VM is now in that production VMs folder. So it got moved to that folder for me. So that is custom resources and resource actions. I hope you find this new feature to be exciting and I'm sure it will help you out in your journey toward building out your automation and hybrid cloud. Thank you.